Hey guys, what's going on? It's Sean Ross. We're here at our corporate headquarters in Las Vegas, Nevada at War. Today we're going to show you a little bit about the mountain bike shuttle vehicle, our Can-Am MX-3. A lot of teams now, big manufacturers, small manufacturers, uh, they use UTVs for their mountain bike shuttle vehicles or just their general shuttle vehicles simply because it's much easier to get to the top of the mountain than it is walking, especially uh, at 105 degree temperatures. Whether it comes to races or just going out and having fun, Let's all uh, you know, be honest with each other. The best part about mountain biking is doing those bombs down the hill and uh, doing the fun runs. And there's nothing better than being able just to have your buddy jump in this, bring you back to the top of the hill. Uh, it just makes everything so much easier and it's a lot of fun. Can-Am we went with, uh, it's a 2019 X3. Didn't need a brand new one. We put a few bells and whistles on it. Uh, gave us a little bit more horsepower to get to those places that we wanted to go. or a little bit more steep inclines a little bit bigger wheels on it, uh, gave it the TMW treatment and full doors and uh, went with a little bit bigger of a turbo and uh, exhaust along with the full intake just to give us that power and a little bit of edge on everything. So we'll go to the back, uh, check out the rack that we used to load up all of our bikes, which we had a lot of options out there when it comes to racks on the back of any of the UTVs. Uh, we chose to go with a ZRP hitch mount and Alta racks. They're up near Salt Lake City, Utah. They do an unbelievable job. The bikes go nowhere when they're on there. They're held by the front wheels, uh, so you're not gonna mess up the crown on your forks, the bikes itself, and we've had nothing but good experiences with them. The tie-down ratchets lock right up to the K&M, keeps it from wiggling a lot. Uh, when we have it on the back of the truck and load it up, we turn a lot of heads going down the road, and there is a method to our madness and reason behind this. Uh, getting the bikes loaded up, it's real simple, uh, quick and easy. We always start from right to left with the Alta racks, and grab one of these and throw them on there. So loading up the rack is real straightforward. Simple as just grabbing from the back, going ahead, throwing the front wheel right in there. Makes a perfect fit. Always want to make sure on everything that you check it's tight. That sucker's not going anywhere. You always got to say that's not going anywhere. Come through, tie it down, repeat for the top as well and uh, you're bouncing down the road a little bit so you want to make sure that it's nice tight it's not gonna go anywhere and that's it we'll go ahead and get the other ones loaded up and uh, then load up the can-am that's the fun part that first model right there is our new draconic rigidtail pro it's coming out here this year our the lead times are a little long right now for uh, our whole industry on parts and group sets but we're open for shipping from the factory uh, estimated time right around December, we're hoping for the holidays. This is the Rigitail Comp, this green one that's getting loaded up here. Both are just all around awesome trail bikes. Great for in and around Las Vegas. There's so much single track up here and out in Boulder uh, that it's just a great bike. Full suspension is amazing for a lot of stuff, but Hardtail does a job just fine out here. Whole process of getting four bikes on there, taking them off, only takes about five, six minutes, especially once you get it down pat. Once you've done it a few times like anything else, come second nature. These are our War Evader gravel bikes. We got two models. Uh, we have a, a carbon fiber model that's getting ready to come out. These are high-end, handmade, heat-treated, 6061 alloy, very strong, lightweight, uh, and can handle anything you want to throw at it. Gravel bikes are a blast too. Love my road bikes but it's just so much more fun, especially in Las Vegas, surrounding area out here. All the roads have so many imperfections. Uh, there's just so much more you can do on a gravel bike out here. So many more places you can go. Uh, and it just makes riding that much more fun, which is why we all do it in the first place. Secure, secure. Everything's tight. We're ready to load it up on the truck. Let's go. All right, now comes the fun part. All right. And everyone always says, especially when I'm driving or pulling somewhere, man, how do you get that up there? So at Ramp Tech, they developed this very skilled and uh, intricate way of uh, loading the Can-Am where a claw comes out of the back. It grabs it from the roof and places it on the top. Which is not true at all. There's actually just ramps that you bolt in and drive it up. But basically the ramps just, come out like this, go ahead, put it on top, 
couple pins go on the top here. I won't lie, was a little sketchy when I first got the clutching gun, the Can-Am, to give us a little bit more power. Uh, almost sent it right over the roof because I wasn't used to the new clutch and kind of power uh, panic gassed it. Uh, but once you get everything down, you're used to it, it's pretty straightforward. And when you get it up there, you know, a lot of people say, oh man, that's way too top heavy. You know, it's a little bit more top heavy, but it's misleading because most of the weight, it's in the back. The motor is in the back of the Can-Am. And when it comes to the Super Duty truck, they're meant for towing a lot of weight. It's definitely not as top heavy as like having, have, having one of those big uh, pickup campers in the back. At this point, some of you may be going, I don't understand, why don't you just get a trailer? We do have a trailer, but there is a little bit of a method to our madness with this setup is that there's a lot of times we're taking the mountain bikes, we're taking riders to places that you can't get a trailer. It's just either would be extremely challenging, too narrow, or in some cases impossible to get a trailer up to. Uh, with a four wheel drive setup like this, we can put the Can-Am on top, have all the bikes, have our videographers, all of our equipment in the back, have our riders in the back, get up to the base of the mountain where normally you wouldn't be able to get a trailer to, and then take this as far four wheel drive wise as we possibly can get it. And then when you need to really get somewhere where the truck won't get to, you get the Can-Am down, get up to the top of the mountain, and then up and down all day long. And when it comes to bringing the riders to the top, it's much easier and uh, it just makes more sense. But that's it. Still is good with all of these crossbars and everything. All the pins are in, it's locked up. Uh, I always double check, make sure the rack, you know, is tight going around. And it really only takes about five to 10 minutes, depending on how quick you're loading uh, to get everything loaded up rather than having a trailer. So the difference isn't that noticeable. All right, now is the fun part. You never want to do this after you've had some drinks. Doing it at night sometimes is a little bit of challenging. Always make sure you got some sneakers on and good shoes that you're not going to slip. I've never slipped, but I had a couple buddies trying to unload it that came close and a wife that, uh, let's just say she took a good spill. Uh, make sure my four wheel drive's on, trail active, put in four wheel drive low, get it all lined up. Now, when I have the bikes on the back, you want to make sure you go slow all the time, but you want to make sure you go extra slow because the bikes tend to hit. And I always use two feet as well, one on the brake just in case. But the back of the bike scrape just ever so slightly when I'm not up on a hill, as you're about to see. Boom. Once you're here, Make sure you're nice and secure towards the front. Put it in park. Turn it off and uh, it's another successful load. I always start with tying down the front first and it looks pretty intimidating up here, but I'm telling you, it's not nearly as top heavy as it looks. All the weight really is in the back and with the super duties, they're meant for really towing heavy loads. That's pretty tight right there. Go ahead, we'll go to the other side. One more for good measure. All right, that's tight. So we're all tied down now, tight. I'll do one more check up front. That's tight. Then I'll either jump down or run down the ramps, but, and that's, uh. How you get everything tied down? Get these bad boys up. And right now, you know, in our area, we're loading up. We don't have like a, kind of a less of an incline to make loading it a little bit less steeper. But as you saw, it goes up smooth. And throw these ramps in there real quick. Boom, we're ready to go tear it up, let's go.
Well, this is the best part about living in Las Vegas. You're in basically single track heaven around the entire valley. You got Boulder City, basically every mountain bike possible trail you can imagine within a three and a half, four hour driving distance. You got Utah, Arizona, along with California. Everything's just a half day drive, maybe full day at the most, but you're centrally located to all the type of riding you'd want to do. A perfect example coming up here too, or some places just having the trailer is going to be more inconvenient than throwing the K&M on top real quick. Weapon of choice. We'll go with the Draconic Ridge Tail Pro. All right, guys, it was fun. Thanks for checking out the video. Hope you guys enjoy the site. If you have any questions, hit us up on info at warbikes.com. Sean Ross, guys from Vegas, we're out of here. Let's pack it up, go home.